Let's move on to the next project, which is Oscar. Mentored by Ms. Rakhi Warrior, Ms. Mr. Fahim Khan and Mr. Ambikeshwar, Mr. Manas Ranjan Das, Mr. Shambhulinga and Doda Parya, and the manager is M Mrs. Usha Vishwanathan. So, good afternoon, one and all present over here. My, myself, Amardeep Singh from Vijay Mumbai, and me and my friends will be presenting a project, Oscar, okay. uh, specifically Oscar version 2.0. Now, OSCAD is a basically a EDA or an electronic design automation tool which can be used to create circuits like schematics, then simulate them, and finally, when your uh, circuits are ready, you can even fabricate them into PCBs. So, now it's basically made using uh, KiCad, NGSpice, and Scilab. Like KiCad is used for PCB designing, and uh, for the simulation purpose, uh, we use uh, NGSpice at the back end. So, what was the need for such a tool was like uh, there is hardly any tool. Uh, an open source tool which can do all of these like together. You can even simulate as well as fabricate products. So, and also, which are uh, like other software like Cadence and OrCAD, they are uh, too like way too expensive as compared to OSCAD, which is open source and free for uh, everyone to use. So, starting with it, so our version, OSCAD version 2.0, is basically an enhancement, optimization, and uh, uh, like bringing together all all of things. Like it was discrete before, so bringing all together. What all things we have done is like uh, we have uh, gone for like we have converted from PSPICE to OSCAD schematic converter. Then there is a Python wave plot added to it. Then there is a GUI for KiCad to NGSpice converter. There is a sub, sub circuit creation and uh, finally the optimizing and redesigning. So all of these tasks have been performed by my team and one, and, uh, one by one we will like get to it. Hello, uh, my task was to convert PSPICE schematic into KiCad schematic format that can be run on OSCAD. So um, many colleges use PSPICE nowadays, and they must have lots of examples. Means .sh file is created, so they must have lots of examples. And then why will they need to? Why will they convert and use our software? So I have uh, created a user-friendly uh, program so that they can use their schematic files and convert them into OSCAD and use our software. OSCAD um, mostly needs two files: .pro and .proj. And these two files are created. Mainly, .hch file of pSpice is read and uh, um, and written in a KCAD format. The algorithm for converting pSpice to uh, format to KCAD format is this: first, we uh, read the schematic file, pSpice schematic file. Um, all the ports and parts are the components uh, that indicates the components in pSpice. Uh, but in KiCad, there are only components. There are no parts and ports. So all that are converted and written in a format that is known to KiCad. Similarly, all the wires and junction means uh, the wires which position that is in pSpice, the same position should be in the KiCad. So we can view the whole schematics. Um, and similarly, we can means view the whole schematic in OSCAD. Um, the main thing is that we can also simulate in OSCAD. Um, means after converting, we can do lots. All we can use all the functions that is provided in the OSCAD. So we um, we read we write all the wires and connections in the format known to um, KiCad. And then uh, the there are extra footers in KiCad. Uh, we need to add. So we write that in that format, and that's it. Then we can open. Um, we create four files. Uh, the common one are .pro and .proj that will open the schematic file in OSCAD and uh, two more files .sch and .cachelip are also created that contains the data, means how the design looks. Uh, so how do we read the files? The parts, uh, this is the flowchart, uh, first uh, this is the schematic, uh, some part of the schematic file of piece files. So uh, we go to add the read parts, means we skip to the add the read parts and read all the attributes and store them. We only store which we are needed in the keycard format and ignore the rest of the stuff. Uh, that is not needed by the keycard. Uh, similarly, creating components, uh, we read all the, uh, we open the library of pSpice and read the design. And same design is used in the keycard. Uh, design means lines, circles, rectangle for register the, that are used. And then, 
this is a part of the SLB file, the piece wise library file. Uh, we take the designs from here, take the attributes which is needed only. I um, mean, KCAD doesn't need all the attributes that piece wise provide. Only certain attributes are needed. We only read those and uh, discard the rest of them. Uh, similarly, for connections and junction, same is the piece wise schematic file. Uh, we only read the attributes like wire, fell if is there, at what, what position it will be, x, y coordinates. Uh, how to use this uh, program? Uh, we need to compile first and then uh, use dot slash converter and write the schema. Two uh, attributes are needed. We need the sch file of the piece spice and uh, we need to provide the name with which the, we will open it in the OSCAD. So just provide a path that will be saved there and then we can open it in on the OSCAD. Uh, this is a one converted example. This is the schematic file in a uh, piece spice and same this is a converted in the keycat uh, that is OSCAD. So Everything is same, uh, this, this is open in the OSCAD and now we can simulate it using the functions which are available in OSCAD. And we can also simulate the plot, similar what's up, um, outputs are exactly same, there is no difference. After the piecewise converter, so coming to the uh, OSCAD, uh, like before, before we had come, uh, you, we use ngSpice for our simulation purpose, so the plot uh, used to come from ngSpice. However, it lacked uh, like functionalities. The user was not like able to operate on the voltages and the currents. So, what like uh, what idea we got was that we should use Python instead of that and uh, create our own GUI and give different like functionalities, different uh, options to the user, so that uh, like he can manipulate accordingly. Okay. So, why we need was basically like the plots in engine are not much convenient. There is lack of functionalities. Also, if you uh, want so. Uh, Voltages, you have to write commands in the terminal. So, if you are not familiar with the commands, then it becomes difficult for you to get the like entire plots as well as the values, the exact values for the different nodes. So, it allows customization. The Python allows customization according to requirements. Even if the user comes up with something new, like he wants something new, we can add it into the same plot. Next, yeah. So, how do they look? Uh, to the right corner, topmost corner, there is a ngSpice plot. You, as you can see, like it just it doesn't give any option, only the, the quit button that you can just quit it. Okay, so coming to this, uh, the GUI below that, uh, that's created using Python. So, like uh, over here, you get the list of all the nodes, all the branches present in the netlist, the netlist that is given to the ngSpice. Okay, and also, like you can uh, manipulate them, like you can write functions. For example, you can add them, subtract, multiply, divide, or even compare two voltages. And accordingly, you will get the plots on the canvas. So, this is like, like like a better user experience. Also, there is a like toolbar over there on the top. There is a toolbar like that allows you to zoom as well as pan and everything. This Python thing has been written by you. Yeah. The whole front end. Yeah. Based on the data you have collected from yeah. NGSpice. Yeah. Yeah. The data has been uh, like thrown out by NGSpice. Like there are some modifications in the command. Like we have like files key to NGSpice that that we generate a net list for simulation that is given as an input to the NGSpice. So over there we write the commands which like print all we like we win or we want all the data re regarding the voltages and the currents in the files. So we get the files and accordingly we plot it. Like we create the GUI. So creating the data in a file is actually an ng spice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All you are doing is reading the ng spice, spice and plotting it. In a, in a yeah. flexible flexible way. way. I know. Yeah. In a better like user experience, like better GUI. Yeah. So this is basically the flow of the code how it goes. There is a keycat to NGSpice the generator. Like what it does is in keycat it will generate a netlist, but that is not compatible with NGSpice. Okay, uh, the NGSpice won't understand because keycat is basically just for PCB designing. Okay, you, you cannot simulate, uh, simulate your circuits in keycat. So you have to parse it and accordingly generate a netlist that NGSpice understands. So that though like that file will also give me the files for the, the data files regarding the voltage and the current. And accordingly, like I open the file and uh, the create lists according to the x and the y axis and simply when the user takes a particular voltage or a node, it's, it gets plotted. So, thank you. I have developed a GUI for KiCad to NGSpice netlist converter in PyQt. First, I'll like to tell you uh, why did I use PyQt. Well, PyQt is platform independent. That is, it, the GUI works fine both on Windows, Linux or any other operating system. And uh, PyQt also provides us with large sets of uh, PyQ widgets so that we can uh, create complicated layouts relatively with ease. It is very flexible and easy to code on. As you can see, this is the front end of Oscar GUI. The third button from the top represents KiCad to NGSpice converter. 
Previously, we used to enter the values of the parameters through terminal, but now GUI for the same. This is how my GUI looks. Well, my GUI consists of uh, two windows, one for the source list and other for the model list. This is this one is for the source list. Uh, the GUI is basically dynamic. The it takes the the GUI is created by taking the input from the nestlist generated from the KiCad file, and then according to the uh, according to the inputs of the parameters, it uh, it forms this GUI. Uh, there is a next button here. The next button closes this GUI and pops up the uh, GUI for the model list. This is the uh, model list of my GUI. As you can see, uh, there is a back uh, there is a clear button here which clears all the parameters uh, all at once. The back button uh, closes this GUI and goes back to the source list GUI. The like uh, suppose the user enters some values in the source list GUI and again presses the next button and then he realizes that he make, made a mistake. So from here he can go back to the uh, previous GUI and make the amendments and then again come back here. I have also included the default values here so that the user might feel uh, easy uh, to uh, give the parameters if he is not known to the actual parameters. So uh, like. There is a default value of um, analog to digital converter 0.8 for the input low level voltage, and the submit and exit button closes this GUI. Uh, I have also included this feature here. Like, uh, suppose the uh, user enters a value, presses the submit button, the values that he that he entered get saved in a file. So again, if he opens the GUI again, the value uh, is retrieved from the file and display uh, and it is displayed on the GUI. Why are you calling it a GUI? What is the full form of a GUI? Graphical user interface. The second thing is that you said is dynamic, right? Yeah. So depending on the netlist, netlist the GUI are, will be clear. Yeah. If there are two voltage sources, you will ask me two parameters. Yeah, yeah. Even the ordering of the voltage sources will uh, will be according to the CI file, according to the netlist. Yeah. Which comes first? Yeah. Which comes first will be on the top. What happens if there are hundred voltage sources? There will be uh, there is a scroll button there. There is scroll button. Yeah. So you can okay. always scroll it. Yeah. And this is done using that PyQt. PyQt. Easy to use. Not easy to use. Basically, uh, it is very compatible. It, uh, it can be used in any operating system. I have uh, tested it in Windows. It works fine. Teak Inter does not. This another GUI uh, for this another Teak Inter. So it does not uh, work on Windows. Like there's some errors. Like there is a font uh, class in Teak Inter which works on Linux, but it doesn't work on uh, Windows. But PyQt it works on uh, any operating system. Now I like my friend Harish to present it. Good afternoon. I have been working on creating sub circuits uh, for OSCAD. Basically, uh, let me give a brief intro of what a sub circuit is for those who are not aware of it. Uh, any electronic, any complex circuit will always consist of something, some elementary circuits. Like if we consider an op amp, it is not an elementary s s uh, device, it consists of a number of uh, transistors, diodes, resistors, and so on. So the underlying circuit is what is called the sub circuit of a component and uh, and why do we basically need a sub circuit for any uh, simulation tool we we can directly import them actually we we can use the ic's directly we need not construct the inner inner parts of the ic secondly we can avoid equivalent circuits for example if i want to construct an instrumentation amplifier i can directly import the sub the circuit for that instead of constructing the amplifier as such. And thirdly, uh, when we do all these, it makes the, the circuit designing simpler. So the, these are the components which I created. Uh, UA741 operational amplifier, 7805 voltage regulator, and 74153 MUX. This is the sub-circuit meant for uh, UA741. It basically consists of four stages, um, differential input, input balanced output, and differential input unbalanced output, voltage regulator, and push-pull amplifier. So this has been designed with five ports, uh, uh, two for power supplies, one for output, and two for inputs. Shouldn't this be readily available in the on the net? No, actually, uh, it, the schematic was available in the data sheet, but it, that was not sufficient to create a sub circuit. Like they have just given a schematic, which is not this is not the same schematic as given in the data sheet. So the schematic given the data sheet does not work. Yeah, it does not work in the How data sheet. I have right. tried. I have tried. Uh, actually, uh, the transistors here had number of uh, current mirrors and so on. I, I did not. Th those current mirrors were not working here. And moreover, the values of the resistances, capacitances, they were all not found in the data sheet. Data sheet was essential, but it was not sufficient for creating a sub circuit. Sub circuit. So that is data sheet. 
yeah shouldn't it be directly available somewhere else it was available as an equivalent uh, as some other equivalent circuit in in the libraries which which did not have this circuit as such it, it was available but it was not available as an uh, as a direct circuit it was available as an equivalent circuit using uh, uh, dependent sources and so on wait good experience to design circuits anyway so this is a uh, sub circuit for 5 pin op amp this has been uh, added as a sub circuit here and uh, it has been implemented for a non inverting amplifier these are the parameters which i used for the input of the previous circuit i have given 5 volt amplitude and the non inverting amplifier has been designed to give a voltage gain of 2 so this has been tested next and it has now the amplitude is doubled uh 10 plus and minus 10 volts so uh, the sub circuit has been used in a actual circuit output is what ng spice yeah and he did not trust your software to give the output how it is using keycat like he he created his circuit in keycat right so the there has to be a netlist given to ng spice for simulation so that simulation like that netlist is created using his circuit whatever he created correct yeah. but he did not use the he output used that, that somebody else did so he used that circuit right oh. that op amp that he showed me over here which the, the op amp symbol you can see it, the circuit behind this symbol is the one he created earlier right. like in keycat see i, I told no, you before, i'm like, just saying somebody claimed that the ng spice plot output is horrible okay so i have, you only claimed i have created this great tool with so much thing and your your partner didn't use it no the most important learning here is if you are working as a team you have to use somebody else's because yeah. you owe it to him to test his software okay right now he is using his own tests okay to claim that his output matches the yeah. ng spice i have no idea if his partner is not using his software doesn't trust it the thing is the you have to use your partners or your team software so that it becomes more robust yeah, we are that gives me confidence that it works. Okay. Coming to it, yeah, we are on the merging. Like half of the merging has been done. Like we eight of us have created sing, like modules, and half of the merging has been done. And before leaving, before leaving this internship, we will complete it. Uh, like, and we can give a presentation if you. No, no, I don't want to. I don't want a presentation. But it's it's good that I have now discovered that you are not a merged entity. Okay, yeah. just because he did not present because your thing. Like, in this week only, like we have. Completed our individual works. Yeah, that's okay. So, model library files. Uh, basically, if, if we consider any one component like diode or PNP or NPN transistors, there can be a variety of them, like BC107, BC547, 2N222, like and so on. And each of them differ in some parameters, like saturation voltage, uh, capacitance, and so on. So each of them can be added as a model to the existing libraries. So these are the model libraries actually. So with these libraries, we will be able to use a variety of uh, components of the same kind, like variety of transistors, diodes, and so on. Next. So this is a bridge rectifier in which there is one. I have added some library files uh, to the existing uh, libraries, uh, in which the in this bridge rectifier there is one in four zero zero seven, and that has been next slide that has been replaced with another component which I have added and uh, the, the added component has different parameters which can be viewed by going to the uh, model, e model editor yeah, these are the parameters of the new component which is differing from the existing parameters in the already existing bridge rectifier so now uh, every uh, like all those who have present here uh, have only uh, worked on OSCAD. Now what we are doing is implementing that OSCAD to a new version, OSCAD 2.0. So what uh, what is OSCAD 2.0? Uh, what we three, me, uh, Saryang and Kunal, what we are doing is, this is a toolbar of uh, OSCAD. What we are doing is, we are implementing all this function inside the first function itself. The first function is the eSchema e editor, which is a part of a keycad. So what we are doing is, we are implementing all the other function inside the keycad itself. So for example, uh, the second button is the analysis inserter. What I have done is, uh, implemented this button inside the eSchema window. So as you can see, the above toolbar is the main toolbar of the eSchema editor of keycad. Uh, what we are doing is, 
the analysis uh, insert uh, the button which was present on the toolbar earlier on the ASCAD is now present on the this window. Uh, the earlier GUI, uh, like uh, this GUI is supposed to pop up when we uh, uh, when we click on the simulation button. So uh, uh, it has uh, five options, DC, DC nested, AC, transient and Fourier and pull, uh, pole zero plot. So this options were, uh, this GUI was first created in Python, which was included in OSCAD. Now we have recreated this uh, in using C++ because uh, the KiCad uh, KiCad backend language is C++. So we recreated this UI. Now it's present on the KiCad schema window. So uh, what are we supposed to do to simulate the schematic? First, first thing is first create a schematic, then the edit the properties if required. For example, for sign component. So now uh, when we put a component on the schematic, we have created a new uh, property called a uh, edit properties through which we can give the values of sign component. Like if it's a sign component, we can give the amplitude, we can give frequency offset values on the schema window itself. This property was not present uh, in the OSCAD and the previous KiCad. So what this is the new. And then the next step is to create a netlist. Uh, first, what we used to do is, uh, the two files used to be generated. One is uh, .cir file, the original netlist file, and the second is the .cr.out file, which, uh, which is required by ng-spice to uh, produce a plot. So as you can see above, this is the uh, previous netlist. It contains the uh, name of the components present on the schematic, and the, the bin out and in are the nodes, and one case the value. And for sign, uh, like v1, there is a sign, so it's a source, so it, uh, it contains five more properties. 0, 5, 50, 0, 0, is, they are the uh, offset value, frequency, amplitude, damping vector, etc. So this netlist is now getting converted to this netlist. So it now contains the extra line dot tran. That is the simulation. Uh, these are the simulation values gotten from the GUI window. So it creates a, a specific format required by the ng-spice. And these are the commands to plot it in ng-spice. This is the example, the plot generated using ng-spice. Same thing, we can convert it to Python plot. We have already merged it. So now I will give it to Kunal. Uh, as my friend uh, Yasvi said, uh, the sub-circuit builder is also a tool in OSCAD toolbar. Uh, what I have done is I have merged it inside eSchema. Uh, basically, uh, let me explain what a sub-circuit builder is. Uh, it is basically used to build sub-circuits for ICs. Uh, it's, uh, it depicts the internal structure uh, for a particular IC. Uh, let me tell you about the shortcomings uh, which was previously present in this sub-circuit sub builder. Uh, uh, the main was the one uh, that user can't access it from inside his schema. He can only access it from the OSCAD toolbar. Uh, secondly, user had to provide a name for editing and creating a sub-circuit. For example, uh, if, you want, if a user want to edit a sub-circuit or create a sub-circuit, user had to provide the uh, name for it. Uh, user has to provide the name for it. Uh, but now what I have done is, uh, we cannot directly access through it, uh, uh, through, it, uh, through form a component, I will show it later. And second, uh, then the, my, my friend showed dependency on an extra file .cr.out which we have removed now. Uh, what this now features added, that first the same user can access with the, within from eSchema. Uh, the, this one I, I was talking about, user can edit and create a search sub circuit just by right clicking on the component. I will show it in the uh, next slide. Uh, this uh, third point is no dependency on cr.out file and fourth one is that uh, all the functions which was uh, done by .cr.out file which this will be now performed by .cr file. Uh, so the main problem was the uh, interaction between the python and c++ code because the, uh, all that GUI, keycat GUI is made of all c++ code and uh, uh, the GUI which, is of, which was made of uh, that OSCAD toolbar it was implemented in python. Uh, so, I use uh, cell scripts as an interface between C++ and Python uh, because cell scripts easily can be used to execute commands. Uh, this is a view of in inside e schema. Uh, when I, this is a comp uh, IC UA741. Uh, when I right click on it, uh, the sub circuit sub menu is present inside edit sub menu. And you can see there are three more sub menus new, edit, and import. Uh, these uh, new, edit, and import works in the same way as, in, as was present in the OSCAD toolbar. Suppose if a sub circuit uh, does not exist of that particular IC, so it will show the show an error that uh, sub circuit does not exist. For this is of new button. 
आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग सपोज सब सर्किट इज ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्ट एंड इफ यू इफ यू यूजर क्लिक्स ऑन न्यू तो इट विल पॉप एन द गो टू एडिट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एडिट बिकॉज सब सर्किट ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्ट एंड इन द सेम वे न्यू इफ आर सब सर्किट डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट इन दैट करेंट प्रोजेक्ट सो इट विल ओपन न्यू स्कीमा फॉर क्रिएटिंग अ सब सर्किट फॉर दैट यूजर Uh, this is of edit sub menu. If a sub circuit already exists, this is an this is an example of US seven four one. If a sub circuit already exists, it, it will open the existing sub circuit a new schema for the user to edit it. Uh, this is the same. If a sub circuit does not exist, it will pop up an error that does not exist. Create it first. Uh, this is import button. The same. Uh, it will give you a list of. Uh, uh, there are two. There were two more. Uh, two more tools to be added. Generate sub circuit for a new uh, for a new sub circuit to create a dot sub file. I have added it in the toolbar, the over beside netlist. Uh, what it will do? It will create the dot sub file of a particular sub circuit which the user has created. Uh, similarly, a export button is also there, uh, which exports the current sub circuit to the sub circuit library. Uh, my friend Sarang will continue. Uh, as he did, as my friend Kunal did, uh, my task was to include the model editor within the schematic creator itself. So, these are the key features. Like he said. the model editor can now be accessed from the schematic itself and uh, the model field name and the value fields are synchronized this is pretty important uh, like uh, when a user create clicks uh, right clicks on a component these are the uh, options that will pop up new uh, edit import and export um presently uh, the model feature is only available to components which have references as d m n q this can be uh, expanded if i have more model libraries included so like as you said i cannot prevent a user from performing experiments on my software so if he tries to click on a, a component that does not have a, a model file for it this uh, error will pop up this which is not currently available so if i click on new a uh, uh, dialog box will pop up he will prompt the it will prompt the user to enter a file name for the model uh, like a diode there are there can be different parameters for different diodes so presently we have a single model for a diode so a single radio button is there yeah when on clicking on okay this is a dialog box that opens uh, it contains all the parameters we can change them and uh, once the user clicks okay uh, he is informed that this model file diode one is now created and it, it is imported to the project library this is the edit option earlier what was happening was in the previous version of oscad when the user clicks on edit he had a long list of uh, all the model files that are present so uh, he would not be able to figure out that which model file is associated with which component so now he can directly click uh, click on edit and uh, the model file that is associated with that particular component opens up and he can edit those values uh, this is the import option this uh, feature is newly added earlier the user was not able to change the file name of the imported model now this has been integrated here one more thing like uh, if the user clicks on export the file that is associated with it directly uh, gets exported to the model repository earlier a list pop up uh, these are the some errors that pop up like if a model is not created and the user clicks on it so that f the first error will pop up and the last one is for uh, if he clicks on export and yet no model file has been imported next so to sum up i would like to conclude that uh, these are the key features that have been included in version oscad version 2.0 piecewise schematic files can now be successfully converted into schematic oscad schematic and be simulated ng spice plot has now been replaced by python plot with add functionalities uh, earlier a terminal was used and now it has been replaced by gui and also insert a model builder and sub circuit builder can now be accessed from the schematic itself and uh, the libraries has have been enriched